Okay, so we're going into nuclear decay. And nuclear decay is going to be when an element breaks down and becomes something else. So there's our learning targets. You're going to see them through the lesson, um, starting off with the four fundamental forces in nature. First force you find in nature, and sometimes in physics, you'll see some of these combined. But in general, gravity is the weakest fundamental force. It's a very weak number. You remember from the constant, the gravity constant was very small, which it took really large masses to actually feel the effect of, of gravity. The reason why you feel the gravity, effect of gravity on Earth in this room is because the Earth is really massive. So it's pulling you down to the ground. But you don't feel the effects of other objects in this room pulling you towards them. Weak force. You don't really have to know much about this, but there, there's a little bit of um, weak force that's responsible for beta decay. You're going to see what beta decay is. You just should just know the order of these forces. Electromagnetism, this is going to be important because the way a nucleus is and, and why it's stable is kind of unique because there's another force that's stronger than that. And I'll talk about it with a little picture in the next slide. Then you have strong force. Strong force is going to be the strongest force in nature. And it's necessary. There, there wouldn't be an atom, if you, you know, a nucleus of an atom, if you didn't have a strong force. So these are just in general the electrostatic force. If the electrostatic force was the only force, was the strongest force, there wouldn't be a nucleus of atom because we know the protons in a nucleus would not want to stay together. So we're going to need a few things. We're going to need some neutrons to kind of kind of buffer those protons around each other. And we're also going to need this stronger force. It's called strong force. Strong nuclear force sometimes you see, but it's a force under very close close distances that's stronger than electrostatic force that will keep an atom together. In most, most smaller atoms will stay together and they're not going to burst apart like, like you would have if you had two protons next to each other. So occasionally there is going to be some sort of breakdown and there's a reason for that. First of all, the first reason is because you might have a really, really large atom. Large atoms, they don't really stay together long term. If they're bigger than, there's a Z number. It has to do with the number of protons. If, the, if there's an atom that has more than 82 protons, it's going to have a lot of neutrons as well. And it's just going to be too big. So massive atoms beyond a proton atomic number of 82 won't stay together. There'll be some sort of decay. And the decay, depending on what element you're looking at, they might have they, they, not, not no two elements decay in the same amount of time. When we get to um, the next lesson, which will be Wednesday's lesson, we'll talk about half-lives. And it, with half-lives, you'll see you, know, you have carbon-14 that may take thousands of years, whereas you may have some other elements that, that, that might take millions of years to decay. Also, the wrong proton-neutron ratio. Once again, when you have protons, a lot of protons, you're going to need more neutrons. So these little white things that I have in, in my picture right here, you're going to need more neutrons. And if you just don't have enough neutrons, if there's less neutrons, um, it's, there's less of that buffer, you're more likely to find an, uh, a decay also occur. So we'll look at the different isotopes. We'll look at this thing called a transmutation. But when you have an element that breaks down and becomes another element, and then a particle is given off, that's called a transmutation. And so that's that's the result of decay going on. So a transmutation is, is, uh, is one element becoming another element. In this case, fluorine is becoming oxygen and giving off a uh, hydrogen right there. But we're gonna look at three main types of decay. It's the three main types, and you should remember this from chemistry. First of all is alpha decay. In alpha decay, the symbol, Greek symbol, looks like a little fish for alpha, for A, is right there. And in our equations that we see when we're balancing equations, we're going to see a helium symbol, a helium with atomic mass of, or atomic weight of four, atomic number of two. So that'd be two protons in there, two neutrons, making up a total weight of four but two protons, so the atomic number will be two. And so when a helium is given off, it's going to change whatever element you had before. There's another type of decay. And what's happening with beta decay, and that's this right here, when you have beta decay, and there's a symbol for beta, you're going to have a proton that becomes a neutron. Sorry, let's reverse that. You're going to have a neutron that becomes a proton. And so when you have a neutron that becomes a proton, 
for neutrons and protons weigh about the same. So the atomic weight's not going to change. But what's going to happen is, and you'll see the reason for this negative one symbol when we put it into equation, you have a proton gain that's going to be sitting next to this, this, uh, the symbol for the, the beta decay that's going to occur in the equation. Also, you have gamma decay. Gamma decay is just going to be a photon of energy. When you have an atom going to a different uh, energy level, photon might be given off, a gamma, gamma ray might be given off, and, but the element's not going to change there. So we'll see a little bit of that too. And so that's the ga gamma decay or gamma rays being given off. I say gamma particle somewhere, but it should be more of like a ray because it's not a particle that's being, being given off. And then based on the size, alpha particle is pretty big. It's a helium, you know, it's helium nucleus. It's not going to be able to get through a piece of paper. Whereas beta particle, which is just an electron, won't get through a sheet of aluminum, but it'll get through a piece of paper pretty easy. And then when you have energy, a photon, uh, a, a gamma ray, Gamma ray, most of them aren't going to get through through a thick lead. <coughs> and so we'll look and we're going to start doing some of these equations. When you look at this equation right here, you have uranium initially had atomic number of 92 or 92 protons. It had 238 protons plus neutrons. And when you have alpha decay, you need to make sure that these numbers are balanced so that four plus four, 234 equals that 238. So that two plus that 92 equals that, or so two plus that 90 is gonna equal that 92. And then beta decay, take a look at what's happening here. So make sure your eyes are up here for a second. What's 91 plus minus one? If you have 91, you add plus, or if you add 91 to minus one, you're gonna get 90, right? You have to watch out for that. The, the beta decay, if you're going to make a mistake, you might make a mistake on beta decay and the, the, because one of these neutrons that made up this 234 all of a sudden became a proton. Still 234, but one of those neutrons became a proton, still the same weight, so the 234 didn't change, but the 90, 90, 90 went up to 91, therefore giving you another element that resulted from that. And then gamma decay with gamma decay, you'll notice when there's a ray given off, you have the same element as a product, as, as a reactant. So let's do a couple examples. And we just, we're going to balance these things off. And you'll see right here, you do need a periodic table for these. Let's go ahead and let's start on this one. Make sure you're focused with me. Let's take a look at the atomic mass first. What atomic mass is missing that can add to zero? that makes it 232. So what's that number that's gonna be right there? What plus zero equals 232? It's gonna be, go ahead, what's it gonna be? 232, it's gonna be 232. And so the first thing you're gonna do is you just pick either the atomic mass or atomic number to work with. And you're just thinking what's missing because we have to have balanced equations. So that's the first step. Then the next step, Okay, so what number is missing here that can add to negative one that will make 90? What number would add to negative one that will make 90? What's that gonna be? What plus negative one equals 90? It's gonna be 91. So 91 is gonna be placed there. And sometimes you'll see the atomic mass, sometimes you'll see the atomic number written in the equation, whatever you see in the equation, just do it the same way. So here I have the atomic mass at up top. There's your atomic mass up top. But now what you have to do is look on the periodic table. So find the periodic table that I have in your notes. Look for 91. What on the periodic table, what symbol has 91 protons? What has the atomic number 91? You find it, you fill it in, and then you're pretty much done with that problem. So if you look at the periodic table for the most part, they're in order. You're going to have some transitional elements that are that are kind of out of, out of place. And you get 91, it's going to end up being PA. So we finished off balancing that equation. We're done. It's beta decay because we have a beta particle involved. We have our balanced equation. 
because the 232 plus zero equals 232, 91 plus negative one equals 90. And then to make sure it's correct, 91 protein number of, or atomic number of 91 only comes in with a PA. You can have isotopes, but once you know the atomic number, the number of protons, you can only have one element that goes with that. Okay, let's go ahead and do this alpha decay. Let me walk you through the same steps. And you're about to finish out the class on your own, just going through practice problems. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're trying to find out what the reactant was. There was a single reactant that broke down through alpha decay because I see an alpha particle here leaving you with this element. So what number should be up top? That's a combination of the 234 plus four. What number is gonna be right here? 238, perfect. So go ahead and put 238 in. And then take a look at the atomic number. What's gonna be a product of the, these two reactants? It's gonna be 92. Now look on the periodic table, what goes with 92? What, what, what's the only element that will have an atomic number of 92? Yeah, it's going to be uranium. So you find it on the periodic table, and then you just plug it in, and, and then you're done. And so I want you to work on these practice problems, filling in the different missing information. These are the ones you have right here. And I'm going to leave this slide up, and don't. First of all, get the answer, and then you can go to this page, and at the bottom of this page right here, you'll end up seeing all the different answers. So if you just scan that, you can have it just ready on the side. Of, you know, If you want to scan it now, uh, you can scan it just to have it, but make sure that you do the work, use the periodic table, figure out the missing element, and then check. After you do that, if you're doing all these right and you get through the nine example problems, then you'll be ready for tomorrow's quiz. So tomorrow you'll have a learning check where you're asked to do this. You have any questions? I can help you out. I'll leave this slide up for now if you're in class. If you're at home, uh, I'm probably going to close off the Zoom if, if I don't have any questions in the next minute or two. Uh, you can always ask me to reopen one if you're having any trouble. But you'll also see when you go to the page that's linked right there in that QR code and you go to the bottom, you'll see these nine problems and you'll see the answers to those problems. If you're getting them right, you should be getting them right on tomorrow's quiz. And just uh, another heads up, just make sure that there are about 60 of my 160 students who haven't taken the last test yet. So make sure you've taken it. You'll see an NTI in the grade book now. I just entered it last period. So you will see it. If, if you took it, you'll see your grade. Some of them really well, some of them were a little weaker. Uh, it was a longer test, I guess more material. So some people had a little more trouble. The final will replace your lowest test grade. So if it happens to be that one, you know, you can make up, you can make it up. Just make sure you go into the final 15%. That's enough, enough percent. They could change a lot of grades. Just make sure that you come in prepared for that final. If you don't have any questions, you can head on out. If you're in class, I'll leave this PowerPoint up here so you can scan the QR code and you can get to the answers to check them. <laughs>